Welcome home. For today's episode, we're going to help you with your business, so we're going to be in the office. My guest for today is both speaker and coach, Shanae Erker. As the owner of her own recruiting business, she has established a massive following with her work as the recruiter cousin. I, I think that the part that they're missing is while we make great influence and while we make great money now, there was a time when we didn't and we had to find our way and we had to find our lane. You just have to know, get to a line where you have completed where, where you actually are trying to start from or where you're trying to be. But just know the light at the end of the tunnel means even more opportunity because there is a great world when we come out of a tunnel. We're not saying that all of you are going to make a certain amount of money within a certain amount of time. We're giving you the resources and the tools to do it. And however you utilize those resources and those tools are totally up to you. Hey family, matter of fact, welcome home. If you already know, you are in the inspired house and y'all, we got we got somebody special, y'all. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to flex or anything, but for us being, a, like, just starting out with our podcast, we have been so blessed to have some amazing guests. And, y'all, I heard everything in the comments. Y'all talked about wanting to grow a little bit more in your career, learning the ins and the outs and learning the secrets and stuff like that. And so I reached out to the recruiter cousin herself, and she is here. To drop game and so y'all I, i'm i'm gonna just shut up so i want to introduce to some and present to others shanae urquhart how you doing i'm doing well how are you oh, we are good yo thank you so much for being a part today and hanging out i appreciate it of course of course thank you for asking I, i'm i'm always um i have a rule with my, myself and myself is you don't just go on podcasts that are well known that are huge and that and all of that, you give you give gems to everyone, whether they're starting out, whether they've been doing it for a while, or whether they're like the big dog. So um, mm. I don't necessarily like count myself as a big dog. I'm just a person that would just like helping people. So I my role is you look at everyone the same. So I appreciate you even asking. Oh my goodness, yeah, of course. Um, for what it's worth. Cause you, you you are a big dog though. Like we just <laughs> let's just let's, let's just, I, I get what you're saying. I love the humbleness and I appreciate it. Right, the the humility that you have, but like you're 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 a big dog. Let's just yeah. Well, I receive it. I receive it. I genuinely because there was a time where nobody like people. Who, of course, I had a a good a good following because I'm a spoken word artist and motivational speaker, but. Um, but there was also a time when I I was sitting in the seats where I now give advice to others. So I just look at it as God just allowed me to switch roles. And now mm -hmm. the way that he's blessed my journey and he's allowed me to be on this side, I now get to give tips and tricks to people that I didn't have for a long period of time. Mm, I feel that. I feel that. That's a really good kind of full circle moment. So, so with that and all the experience and the things that you have, I would love if maybe if you would just be willing to just let the folk for 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 those few people who may not know, to just tell them who you <laughs> are. A lot of people don't you know. do. <laughs> not many folk that so, I know anyway. <laughs> so my name is Shanae Urquhart. Uh, for those people who know me and who are comfortable, that I am Nene. I am Nay. I am Shanae. My mom still calls me Pook. She does not care that I'm almost thirty five. I am Pook to her. So, uh, so I'm Shanae Urquhart. Um, I, so before I got married, I was Shanae Hammond. I was a motivational speaker, spoken word artist, and a graduate from St. Augustine's University with a major in political science and minor in English. I pledged the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated while I was in college, the Gamma Rho chapter, shout out to y'all, uh, in spring 10, number 14. I have not said that for a very long time. So I'm surprised that I remember actually like all of that. Um, and then I went on to, uh, wanted to be an attorney. So I went on to North Carolina Central University School of Law. I It's interesting because my journey wasn't college, college graduate and then law school and then uh, law school graduate. It was more of college graduate, entered into law school, 
before I even got into law school, I actually, I had gotten rejected from, you know, a law school or two. Um, very low LSAT score, was not a good test taker, but I eventually got into Central. Shout out to y'all. And then um, after my first year of law school, I was academically dismissed. So lowest GPA I had ever seen. Um, literally, but law school was death, sickness, death, heartbreak and depression. And then I was able to graduate in the midst of all of that. And so it was in it was in those moments where I felt like like the scriptures that we learn and the life lessons that we learn are no longer cliche. And so from that, I just kind of started to build my character and I really started to build on a, a lot of things that I learned when I was in the Valley. And so mm-hmm. um, I then went into, uh, after graduating law school, took the bar three times. I did not pass it. Decided that a fourth time, I was signed up for a fourth time and I was at work and I just told my husband, I was like, babe, I don't want to do this no more. And he was like, cool. And I and it took some really like some time to really think to myself on if I felt like I was like letting my mom down and letting the people down who really was counting on me being an attorney and all of the money that they spent. I, I really went through that. And my mom was like, girl, you can be anything you want. I don't care if you ain't no, no lawyer. Mm-hmm. And that really took a lot of a lot of a lot of weight off of me. So so after I decided I did not want to be an attorney, it took me from from that day, it took me four total years to to um, land my first full time role. So excuse me, let me back up. It took me four total years from the time I graduated law school until the time I got my first full time job as a recruiter. That was four years and about a month. And so wow. I I genuinely understand what it means to be a job seeker. I understand what it means to have a terminal degree and people overlook you because you are overqualified, so to speak. I know what it feels like to be told no countless times. I know what it feels like to be referred and to still be disqualified. And I, I, the amount of frustration y'all feel, I get it from firsthand experience. So I do my best to make sure that the same principles I had to apply when I was a job seeker I try my best to give you all even more principles and tricks and tips and all of these things throughout your journey to at least cut your time at least more than half down to how I how long I was a job seeker. So I just provide a lot of tips and tricks to help people try to allow help them to think outside the box whenever they're job seeking. I throw in some poetry and some motivational speaking. I'm an author of three books of poetry. So I did that before I was 30. I've done a lot of things. <laughs> and so I just allow God to move me and to direct me and to guide me. And whatever that looks like on any given day, that is how I show up. So that is me. That was fire. Like, first <laughs> off, wow, kind of what a story in what a process in like, yeah. I can't help but think about what you were saying, the the process of that school and going through a lot of what you went through and mm-hmm. how un what's the word? I would say how sadly common that's becoming more and more like folk who go through a lot of traumatic stuff during what's supposed to be like the most like exciting time of life, you know, mm-hmm. and, and sometimes a lack of resources. I think that can be there to really help folk. And so. Wow. So we, when you kind of consider all of that and you look at everything that you've gone through and you see the success that you have, the poetry, the 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 successful consulting that you do and in, in, in recruiting and being the recruiter cousin, how does that not get to your head, would you say? You mean like as a, like getting a big head? Mm hmm. Because I, I'm wise enough to know that it can be taken away at any time. I'm, I am, I'm also very wise enough to know that I, I actually wrote this. I wrote this in a post on Instagram this morning. I wrote, I am not untouchable. I'm unapologetically myself, but I'm also not untouchable at the same time. So I'm very wise in understanding. Like my mom told me, and, and it's always a joy to hear from my mom. My mom told me, Shanae, the one thing that's different about you is of all the success that you've had, you've never forgotten where you come from. And I said, correct. 
It, I, mm-hmm. I will never forget Camden, New Jersey, Pensacola, New Jersey, Philly, all of that is still in me. And so I know what, I know what it's like to watch my classmates be at the, like the peak of who they, who they were at the time. And then all of a sudden they're not anymore because either they gave up or they've made a different decision and something happened within that process or that journey. I know what it's like to, I know what it's like to, to see people who are, who were once grounded and are no longer grounded. And I, I attribute a lot of that to, to the support that my Trinity gives me. So my grandmother's no longer here, uh, passed mm. away almost 11 years ago, but my mom and my aunt are still here. And so I know what it, I, that Trinity that, that I attribute a lot of my success to is something that really keeps me grounded. And, and when I graduated law school, my aunt also said, congratulations, but you'll always be my big head ass little niece. So <laughs> it really, it really grounds me. She was like, I don't care how successful you are. You still going to be my big headed ass niece. And I was like, got it. So for me, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a reminder of, I may have, I may, have accomplished all of these things and all of the things that I'm able to do are exactly that. They are things. But when I go to bed at night, I need to be happy with myself. When I wake up in the morning, I need to be happy with myself. And so even when I look my husband in the eye, it's convicting if I'm not, if I'm not doing what God has called me to do. So I am a firm believer in that be anxious for nothing, that if God is for you, who could be against you? I am a firm believer in God's protection and resilience in that. So I am that that's honestly what keeps me grounded and what keeps me from not being getting a big head. And if for those of you who want a big following, um, it's also it can be daunting at times because people pull you in different directions. So it, it's a that's what keeps me level headed is I get tired and I won't go to sleep mm. and I don't want to talk to nobody else. So <laughs> that's honestly what keeps me grounded. I love that. The the humility, but also the humanity. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, a big following and stuff is great, but a big following doesn't change you my energy. I got, you know, nope. It's yeah. a number. It's a number. That's it. It's like literally, yeah. people click a button and your number count goes up. That's it. Yeah. Like people, people with big followings, they can be the most miserable people behind their phones or behind their computers. And I am just not like that. I'm also a, I'm also a an advocate for please do not listen to people just because they have big followings. Do your research on them. Connect with them. If they if you connect with what they say, great. If you don't connect with what they say, that's great too. Go find somebody else that you do connect with. I am I'm that humble. I am do your research on me first. We may not yeah. connect, connect, and that's fine. Do your yeah. research. That's a fact. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. Do do your research and see if there really is a connection there. And I think that's awesome. And what I'm hearing a lot is there's a lot of season and experience in, in what I'm hearing from you, right? You're not mm-hmm. just kind of just giving one-liners and stuff. Because a lot of folk who just, they talk and it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Or they're repeating something else that they heard. But what I'm hearing from you is like, hey, I've lived this, I've experienced this, and this is what I've learned from my experiences. And I think that is really powerful. For for a second, if I can, um, again, thank you for being on. And I would love to hear a little bit with what you're currently doing as the recruiter cousin. For those who may not know, exp- explain that a little bit, because like that's that's kind of blowing up. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't think I, I I anticipated it growing blowing up as much as it has. If anything, I my foundation to who I've grown this brand to be has always been I want to be able to have multiple streams of income. I want to be able to take care of my family. I do not want to live paycheck to paycheck because I watch people who I love, myself included, live paycheck to paycheck. And I'm tired of that. Like I I actually, the one thing I will say say about myself is if you show me something, I'm going to pay attention. I pay mm-hmm. attention. I take mental notes. And most people may not think I'm listening, but I pay, I'm paying attention to you. So for me, mm-hmm. it's I've been able to I've been able to take something that I did not plan to grow as big as it has and just make it make it human like you said before i've the recruiter cousin came from 
I was on LinkedIn one day and I saw something that said corporate cousin. And I was like, huh, I didn't know people did that. Like, I just didn't think that was a, I didn't know that was a thing. And my my poetry name is CLE, the artist. So my initials, Sinead Levet Erger, CLE, the artist. And I was just like, I could possibly rebrand myself and say, I'm a recruiter. I want people to feel like family, cousin, recruiter cousin. That makes perfect sense. Corporate cousin, if you hear this, just know that I saw yours and I was like, I like that. Let me see if I can actually like apply that to myself. So shout out to you. Uh, but I, that's kind of how I just kind of built it. And then it just, it made sense because before I got into tech, I was a recruiter. I was a recruiter in higher education, healthcare, and then I just switched, switched over into tech. And so I work in big tech. I have experience in big health. I have experience in big education because the institution that I work for are, and the, the healthcare system that I work for is extremely large. And I I got a chance to network with some amazing people, some not so great people, which is that's with the world. And I got a chance to hear life in different perspectives. And when I got into tech, it got even more big. It got to a point where I started to network with people of different cultures and and got and actually like gain, gain friends of people in different cultures and and encounter certain things that I didn't really know I needed to encounter until I encountered them. So. That's kind of where like recruiter cousin came from. It just came from a place of wanting people to feel comfortable talking to a recruiter. It also came from a place where I did not see a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn, like responding to their messages individually or responding Mm -hmm. to people's wants and needs in a certain way, the way they needed it to. So for me, it was how can I serve the community in the way that you need to be served, not the way that I know how. I need to listen to you. So how do I meet your need? How do I show up for you? And so I started to just watch different posts and I started to post like answers to other people's questions. And Mm -hmm. I took hours after work and I would go through my LinkedIn DMs and I would just answer individually and I would just give tips and tricks. And then it went from there and it was, all right, y'all go contact Sinead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so here we are. That's that's powerful because what I'm hearing is again a, a consistency of values. A yeah. consistency you, you mentioned um you mentioned kind of that idea of wanting to establish and and, and build that sense of family, wanting to yeah. kind of take that family in some of the best family we got are not just the ones that we love, but there is I think this exchange of something, whether it's like You know, I have that one cousin that I can always just hang out with. Or if I go to auntie's house or grandma's house, there's food that's there. And so it's really interesting how you took this family concept of like cousin. And again, shout out to corporate cousin, like you said. But it was like, I'm not just the cousin who just shows up and is just like, oh, hey, I'm your cousin. It's Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to grab a plate and roll. But it's like, I'm that cousin that's coming with something in their hands. Sure. And it's that opportunity. And I think that's that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 I'm also really that cousin that you just can't take from. And that's that is that is where I've learned a great boundary of I'm going to I give as much as I can. At the same time, I am not someone that you can just take from because I used yeah. to be that person who would give and give until until to my detriment. And so I got to a place where God has helped me and the people in my life have helped me build some great and much needed boundaries where, where yes, we can go to auntie's house or we can go to grandma's house or we can go and hang out at our cousin's house. But I, but just know that I also have boundary. If you can't respect that, we cannot be in each other's lives. I've learned that greatly in my thirties. And so uh, I'm also someone who doesn't have the best relationship with some of my family members that I would, I would like. And because I know that, and I, I, I accept where people are in their lives, myself included, I've gotten to a place where my boundaries are my boundaries. My yes is my yes and my no is my no. no, is my no. And if if we if we can't if we can't respect each other, no matter who you are in you know somebody's life, then uh yeah, we can't be in relationships. So that's for me. That's that's family, that's friends, that is colleagues, that that's anyone who I encounter I have I have a great boundary that I have with myself because at when when the day is over, Shanae needs to be filled. 
And if I am so empty that I can't show up for myself, then I've done a great disservice to myself. Hmm. At the end of at the end of the day, it needs to be filled. And if you haven't taken care of yourself, you've done a disservice to yourself. How how then can for our listeners who are listening and they see the success that you have? Maybe they're just now starting out in their career or maybe they're looking to kind of make that pivot instead of just going straight into the what are the tips and tricks of the corporate thing and stuff like that. How can how can those life skills of like creating boundaries and stuff like that, how can that benefit someone who's looking to maybe make a career jump or start a career? How can those type of skills Because it sound like those things have benefited you because you've learned. So how can what? How can someone who's listening maybe kind of implementing glean from that, would you say? Yeah. So the one thing about boundary setting is in boundary setting for yourself, you have to boundary set to where you're literally tunnel vision. Right. So when 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 whenever we're in a tunnel, the boundary is the wall. Right. We can't deviate. Because we're literally focused on getting through the tunnel. And I think that most of the time, our tunnel vision is, yes, we can see the finish line, but our boundary is actually our protection. Because when we're in a tunnel, we don't know what's around the tunnel. It can be water, it can be trees, it can be anything that is not conducive to the the vehicle that we're in. And so the person that is starting out to their career in their career, having tunnel vision of where you want to go is fine. Just know that when you get out of the tunnel, there are a plethora of things that you can do. You just have to know, get to your get to a line where you have completed where where you actually are trying to start from or where you're trying to be. But just know the light at the end of the tunnel means even more opportunity because there is a great world when we come out of a tunnel. So Mm -hmm. what so what I mean by that is there the boundary that you have to start with whenever you're in that tunnel is you have to tell yourself. I want to do this, right? My this was being an attorney. When I, I had tunnel vision through law school, trying to pass the bar, my the end of my tunnel was actually graduating. I've now reached the end and I've said, oh, there are so many more things that I can do with my law degree outside of being an attorney. My tunnel vision though was my focus on getting to my graduation. There are times when we are so like, literally like this and just putting out fillers that we're not focused. So there has to be a focus somewhere in your journey where you're able to then get to a place of focus. Once that focus comes into play and you reach a line where you say, okay, now I can do all of these things because I focus on this one thing. So the idea is I get a lot of people who I want to be a project manager. I want to be customer success manager. I want to do scrum master. I want to be a program manager. I want to be a software. I get so many of them at the same time. And there are times where I'm like, dog, pick one, pick two. Let's pick two. Let's, let's narrow it down to two. Those two that I make people pick are the things that are related to each other, right? Because I don't want you to pick two separate things that are so at the op- opposite end of the spectrum that you find a hard time narrowing down what you're the job that you're actually really trying to go into. So I tell people, pick two that are within the same discipline. Those two things could very well be a project manager and let's say a scrum master because both of those things are operational. So for me, it's your focus has to be something that you can pick you can then put put your put the work into those things that you pick, those boundaries around your tunnel. And then once you get out of it and you finish the very thing that you started, you learn that there is a plethora of opportunities surrounded by exactly the things that you've picked. And if there are not a plethora of things and you realize you've picked something that you can only do one thing, take yourself through another tunnel. Mm, I love that. That's good. I, love, I like that tunnel analogy. You're giving me a lot of stuff that I'm going to just be truthful and tell you up front. I am going to use this when I'm coaching people. Right. Do, please and, and do I, it. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I'm and I'm going I'm to follow the rule of three. I'm going to say, you know, Shanae said that da, 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 da. And then it's going to turn into, you know, one time I've heard da, 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 da. And then mm-hmm. I'm looking at them and say, you know, life is kind of like a tunnel. And you just, <laughs> like, I'm just, just letting you know. Just, just letting you know, all right? It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> so, so what I'm hearing then is, 
if we can practice getting some tunnel vision and the things that we're pursuing, it'll open up the opportunities. And if we have the right type of boundaries, we can see exactly what opportunity is really for us. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Because the thing is, because of the flip side of that is you are so focused on one thing that you're not open to other things, right? It doesn't mean you being focused and getting to the light at the end of the tunnel doesn't mean that you have to stay in that one lane. That's why the, that's the point of coming out of a tunnel. It's being able to see everything you can apply based on the focus that you had at one point in your life. But if yeah. if whatever you focused on does not work for the great deal of things that are in the world, you have to go through another tunnel and focus again. That's all. Yeah, I love that. So if so, then for our folks who are listening, my head, by the way, I didn't think about that for this <laughs> for this episode. I was fire. That was fire, though. That was fire. <laughs> So then if 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 that's kind of what we're looking at, what are some things as a recruiter? So so first off, not only as a recruiter, but someone who has a law degree, understanding kind of the ins and outs of law, I'm assuming probably understanding maybe how to like understand people, maybe read people. Am I am I like on the right track, right? Mm-hmm. What are <laughs> I ain't gonna front. You got me nervous. You said, mm-hmm, I'm reading you right mm-hmm. now. I'm like, okay. That's that black woman. Her. That's that black woman response. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, yep, yep. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Watch what you say. Um what what then for the person who's listening who mm-hmm. might want to go into an interview or they want to go and look at some of those big spaces where they're like, Oh, I, I wanna I wanna apply there, but I'm just not completely sure if you had to like describe or give advice on maybe one um one universal quality or universal characteristic that would be helpful for people who are applying in this job market right now what would that be yeah uh, it's interesting because this is going to sound very juvenile and it's going to sound like it's common sense but it's not i would say the one Mm -hmm. universal thing is confidence it's confidence right now i understand Again, we learn confidence and we're kids. We learn confidence and we continue to build on the confidence that we get within certain things. The universal thing that keeps you going is knowing that you can do something. It's in not, not forgetting that you can actually do it and continuing to tell yourself, I know that I can do this thing. I never, when I tell y'all, I never imagined working where I work ever. I always said I wanted to own stock, but I never imagined imagine working there and owning stock. I like I never, not one bit of me said you would work here one day at all. Mm. One, it's not that I never wanted to, it's not that I didn't think I was good enough. I just it was just a place that I never imagined being. And part of that is just because I've and I've said this ad nauseum. Tech is not something that's taught to the black community at a very early age. So we don't mm-hmm. we have a lot of STEM programs now. But yeah. when I was a kid, it, it granted, we most likely still had them, but it wasn't like a big thing for us yeah. in our community. And so now yeah. that I am in big tech and I'm a technical recruiter, I'd never really imagined being here. And so in my interviews, I just exercise confidence. I genuinely just took it upon myself to be myself. And I am animated and I love to have fun. And the recruiter gave me permission to be myself. When he was like, be yourself, I was like, bet, here I am. And every bit of like example that I was given in my interviews, and this is exactly what I was doing as I was talking and like literally like acting out stuff. And I tell you this all the time. It was an example I gave where I pushed my chair back. I went like this and I was doing this and I was shaking my desk and I was just acting out exactly what happened in my example. And it made the interviewer just go like this because she was so intrigued with this story yeah. and she was so entertained. And it got to a point where she stopped taking notes and she just like, like her whole face, she's like, what happened next? Like, oh my gosh. And for me, that clicked. As soon as I did that, I was like, I wonder if I can teach people how to make people lean in. 
and just like go like this and just listen to what they're saying. Because if they stop writing or typing and they just do this and they're so intrigued with your story, they will not forget the example because they're so intrigued with the story. So for me, it's the amount of confidence that I had in my interviews. Let me tell you, I ain't know nothing about tech. I had like, I might have recruited maybe one technical rec- uh, position when I was in healthcare, but I know I did not know anything about recruiting software engineers or anything like that. I just knew, I said, I said to myself, if they asked me to implement some type of tech, I came up with a whole platform that I would implement. Like I was preparing, I didn't know what I was talking about, but I just knew that this was something that the people needed. And it had nothing to do with that. All it had everything to do with the amount of confidence that I had in my interviews. And when I read my interview feedback, it was higher, strong, higher, higher. And I'm just like, bet, let's do it. And it's all because literally I show up with confidence. Doesn't mean I'm not going to make a mistake or two or a lot, yeah. but I just show up with a lot of confidence. And I mean, y'all may not know this, but most of the time, most of the things I tell y'all, I don't know if it's going to work. It just makes sense to me. And I say it with a lot of confidence. Like there are certain yeah. things that as I'm talking through it, a light bulb will go off as I'm talking and I go, oh, well, tell them to do this or God will go tell them to go this way. Tell them to say this or tell them to, that's kind of how it happens. And I just do it from a very confident place. Wow. I think with the first off, that's that's like million dollar advice, first and foremost. That's like literally million dollar advice Um, because People say be confident, but they don't give like examples, I think. And the example you gave on what confidence looks like and how that is, is just being able to show up authentic and being able to show up fully who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And showing your best qualities in that moment. I I love that because that's that's such a solid definition of confidence. Mm-hmm. And, That's it. It's, uh, it's interesting because a lot of things that I say, honestly, Desmond, a lot of things I say, I don't even know if other recruiters are going to agree based on them being in the industry as long, longer than me. So when they agree, I'm like, oh, snap, I was right. Like, well, in my head, I'd be like, oh, snap, I was right. They agree. <laughs> so a lot of it comes from a place of confidence, honestly. I love that. I love that. So with what you were talking about, um, specifically with black people in tech Mm -hmm. and kind of the opportunity that's there with you being the recruiter cousin with you um doing stuff with i I think like tech is the uh tech is the new black and Mm -hmm. and all of that what have been some themes you've discovered that our people should maybe pay better attention to if they want to get into the tech field yeah, so shout out to Cyrus because Tech is the New Black and his team and like Rhea and Aja and Eric, they're doing amazing things. Uh, what I will say is I think the one thing we don't fully understand about getting into tech, however you want to do it, and getting some of these salaries that a lot of people really want, I think the one thing that we don't recognize, it is not it's not a quick fix for everybody. Like, mm. far from it. And so what I mean by that is most people think when you get in the tech, you are immediately going to earn six figures. Not at all. Like not one bit. And so I think that people fail to understand that if you are making $50,000 a year and you get into tech and your, your offer is between 75 and 80, you have increased your salary by 25 to $30,000. That's not a little bit amount of money. So So when I think about what I think about when people are getting into tech and how they're trying to do it, there is no one specific way to break into tech. There is no one position to break into tech. I posted I posted a a video of real yesterday that said that I had a candidate whose salary expectation was seven hundred thousand dollars as an expectation. And actually, it was seven hundred thousand plus. So it wasn't just $700,000. And a lot of people in the comments were asking, like, people make that kind of money? Like, what position is that? Or what do they do? And I tell them, they they literally went, they went to school. They did a lot, of, a lot of research in their schooling. They did a lot of 
networking and a lot of getting the experience, a lot of this stuff we're new to in this particular area. And so there is no one quick thing to get into tech and to make a certain amount of money. If anything, I think most people need to baby step themselves through the process because they see a lot of they see the Cyruses and the recruiter cousin and some and Simone B and B's and uh, Kayla B and and Anthony O'Neill. They see all of these great people, black people specifically, who make great money in tech. And I think that's great. At the same time, though, none of that came overnight for any of us. So Mm -hmm. I, I think that the part that they're missing is while we make great influence and while we make great money now, there was a time when we didn't and we had to find our way and we had to find our lane. And so I just think now all of us are giving back to what how we actually did it. And we're trying to we're trying to teach you a quicker way to do it than how we actually did it. It, we're not saying that it's guaranteed to be fast. We're not mm-hmm. saying that all of you are going to make a certain amount of money within a certain amount of time. We're giving you the resources and the tools to do it. And however you utilize those resources and those tools are totally up to you. Mm, okay. And and what I'm hearing though is that there is this, there is this need, there needs to be this willingness to do the work. There needs to be mm-hmm. this willingness to kind of, to just get started. Yes. If, if if what I'm hearing is correct and and kind of practicing again and it, it's so good cuz I know that came off the top of your head but practicing again that tunnel vision. Yeah. And taking those steps. Does that, yeah. does that So let's put the tunnel vision in an example. Let's let's actually and I anytime I'm about to explain something I grab a pen like I'm about to write it down. <laughs> I'm like, so, "What's the whiteboard? Show me." I literally I grab a pen cuz I got a notebook in front of me and I'm just like I grab a pen like I'm about to write it down. So, so let's think about the tunnel vision, putting that in an example. So yeah. your tunnel vision, most people decide that they want to do some type of boot camp, some type of program that is like a prolonged boot camp, but not necessarily an associate's or bachelor's degree, which I think is great. Your tunnel vision is your actual your boot camp or the program that you decide to do. So that's your tunnel vision. When you graduate, whatever major, whatever focus area you chose. When you graduate, you have you are now outside of your tunnel and now you are now job seeking and there are a plethora of opportunity outside in the world as a job seeker. So let's take an SDR as an example. SDRs are normally uh, uh, not normally, but I will say one of the quicker ways that you can get into into tech is through sales. And so I'm sorry, a a sales development representative. So. Uh An SDR, sales development representative, most people will go after being an SDR. What people fail to realize is not only do you have SDR, you have BDR, which is business development representative. Some companies are going to use them interchangeably. So what I would do is I would take the fact that I did a boot camp and I would do SD, I would find SDR roles and I will also find BDR roles. Now, here is the here is the caveat to that. Right. Here is the thing where you have to really like, okay, what's on the opposite side of that? The opposite side of that is every single person that you were in the boot camp with also now becomes your competition. So let's think about let's think about there are many boot camps in the world. There are many colleges in the world. There are billions and trillions of people in the world. If all of you are doing all of these boot camps and all of you are trying to break into tech at the same time, that means the market becomes so oversaturated oversaturated with people who are trying to break into tech that it becomes probably triply, triply, I don't even know what that's the word, go with it, triply hard to get to, to get to, to, to the, the finish line, that end mm-hmm. of your tunnel type of thing, right? And so what I tell people to do, I had a session yesterday where I told someone I told someone, she said she wanted to stay in med tech. So I said, okay. She said, the problem with staying in the medical part of tech, because I have experience in healthcare, is I don't know what are the other like med tech type of companies that I need to actually like look into. So we did an exercise. I did everybody who knows my parent, child, and going all the way down the family line of companies. So I told her, I said, here, I said, all you do is you Google all of the major med tech yeah. companies and then you look to see what are what companies they own. 
And literally her eyes were open because so many companies came up and she was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this was a thing. And I told her, I said, I said, it's, I'm not saying that this is going to work for you, but I've now given you a path. So all you have to do is boundary yourself and this is your yep. path. And now you go down it. If you need to deviate, that's fine. If we need to explore again, that's fine. But you have now get, gotten a path that you need to focus on so you can actually you can actually get to where you want to be because you focus on this one thing. A lot of people are trying their hand in the spraying and praying method that it's, okay, oh, this job popped up on LinkedIn and I can do this, so let me apply to it. I found this job on Google, so let me apply to it. The more you do that, the more frustrated you will be. For someone who did that, I was frustrated as hell. So I understand what it's like to have a job pop up and you're trying to figure out like, oh, I can do this or I can do that and I meet the minimum qualifications for this. So my parent and child method just came from organizing yourself and making sure that if you're going to mass apply, you do it in an organized way so you're not all over the place mentally and you're not mm -hmm. all over the place physically and you're breaking yourself down trying to find a job. If you organize yourself, it won't be as daunting as it feels. First off, the confidence is coming through because I'm seeing all of the moves and I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, yo. So, so, so to our Inspire family, if you're listening on Spotify, you might want to jump over to the YouTube to see this video because right now, like the, the moves is moving, the gesture is like, <laughs> I don't know if you're a recruiter or if you're a preacher. You're definitely a poet because I, I see the flow coming through and and, I, and I'm loving it. I, I, I got to ask. So you said parent-child method? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would, would you be comfortable with expounding? Yeah, and explaining let's, that? Do right. so let's do it. So real, real quick, real quick, before you go into there. I just there. So happen to have my notebook in front of me. Let's do it. Y'all need to be listening because y'all's y'all's getting some game right now that if you're serious about what you're trying to do, getting a job, listen to this. Floor is yours. Okay. So in any industry that you are you want to go into, it does not have to be tech, but let's take tech for it for an example because that's a, an area that's hot right now. That's an area that a lot of people are trying to get into. In any industry that you go into, every industry had they have top companies that are like the named companies of that industry. For tech, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's 10, 10 companies. Those uh, outside of the fang main companies that everybody talks about, I have a total of 10 on my list that I tell people to look into. Those 10 companies are Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco, IBM, Google, Meta, Apple, Samsung, NetApp, Intel. All of those companies are parent companies. Right. So you want to go and start at the parent company first. So those companies are co parent companies are companies that own other companies. Right. Mm -hmm. So the parent company, you go through each lineage of the parent company to determine if there are any positions that match your skill set. So let's so if you if you pick a parent company, you apply first to that parent company. You see, if they don't have any positions or even if they do have positions that match your skill set. All you do is you Google or you Bing or whatever streaming service that you use, you go, what are the child companies or subsidiaries of this company, whatever company you're choosing? You then take all of the subsidiaries that, that, the, that the, um, the search engine gives you and you apply across the board to all of those child companies. As you click down, You'll start to, in more in your research, you'll start to find like startup companies, nonprofit organizations, and even partnership companies that other child companies are in are kind of in partnership with that you may not even know existed. So the only reason why I did this was, the only reason why I kind of had this idea was I was on LinkedIn one, one Saturday when I probably should have been doing other stuff, but I was on LinkedIn one Saturday and I, I, I happened to look up this company called NetApp. The only reason why I know what NetApp is, is because NetApp has a campus that's by my house. So mm -hmm. NetApp has a child company called Spot. So LinkedIn was just helping me drill down. And I was like, it said Spot by NetApp. 
And I was like, oh, that means NetApp must own Spot. And then I went to Spot and then it said, Clicker, part of Spot by NetApp. And I was like, huh. Hmm. Like I literally went, okay, what's Clicker? So then I went to Clicker and I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. So then I said to myself, if we take all of the major companies of tech, we apply apply to the positions that we meet minimum qualifications for, and then we take all of the companies that these tech companies own, and we apply there if they have separate applicant, applicant tracking systems, because some of the child companies have, may have the same applicant tracking system as the parent company. So it just may take you back up to the parent company. If it doesn't, apply to the to the companies that have a different applicant tracking system. And then I started to think, I wonder if we can drill down a little more, we can start finding some like tech startups and nonprofits that are connected. And the more I started to talk through this, the more, and I started to kind of give people this advice, the more companies I found that I didn't even know existed either. So if you take these top 10 tech companies, you go through all, all of those companies and you take each company one by one, all 10, and you go through the lineage of their company, you'll find a bunch of companies that you didn't know existed because everybody's mm -hmm. paying attention to these top 10 companies. So I wonder if I can lessen my competition because everybody else is paying attention to all the big name companies. If I, if I lessen my competition by going to the child company in the middle or at the bottom, I've broken into the industry that I want to go into. Now, if I really want to work for the parent company, all I got to do is work my way up because I already work for their subsidiary. Mm, that, yo. That's only tech. Yo. So think about if it was, if you did the same thing for healthcare, same yeah. thing for manufacturing and oil and gas and then energy and utilities. And think about like higher education, automotive and retail. Think about if you did yeah. it like literally job search that way. Just just break it down and just do the that is fire. I I you breaking that down makes makes me want to ask was this kind of due diligence and curiosity that you possess and kind of focusing in? Was this something that you've had throughout or was it something that kind of got honed in during law school, right? Cuz it seems like that digging into the the nitty gritty of it. That seems very much like a lawyer -y trait. So is that something <laughs> you've always had or? I think, I think, um, I think law school definitely helped with that. I think, I think I was always like a dig deep type of person because I wrote poetry when I was 11 and from a very deep place. I wrote poetry that like grown people were right. And yeah. in a way, not necessarily, not necessarily provocative, but in a way where like your mind shouldn't be thinking that deeply at 11. Like mm. normally a grown person because they've had life experience thinks that deeply. And so I think digging deep came for me at a very early age, but digging deep with a purpose and like attaching some data and all of that and like some, like tangible things, I think that came from law school. So when you look at and you break down cases and you break down statutes and you have subsections and all of that, and you have to keep drilling down, I think that's where that came from. I also think too, though, that I just, I, I never thought of job seeking that way. And mm -hmm. it, and it, for me, I was just like, I wonder if a job seekers process would be a little bit more targeted if they just don't spray and pray, if they can just figure out like, figure out the companies you really want to work for, although so you're still mass applying or my, don't mind working for. I wonder if we can be a little bit more targeted. Somebody actually told me they use that method. They only applied to 12 companies and got a job from just 12 companies. So I, I think that it's important that we, we organize ourselves in a way where, again, it's not daunting, but at the same time, you never know what you're, what you, fine if you do it in a very organized and strategic way. I, I love that calculated approach and how you focus that in. And again, you, you like this, like this is now a thing now, just to let you know, like the tunnel, tunnel <laughs> the, 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 the tunnel is tunneling. All right. And, and how you do that and how you, how you break that down, I think is phenomenal. And shoot, I, I got to look at that and, and, and apply that. So, I, I guess with the time that we have left, were you about to say Can something? I add one more thing? Yes. 
So I want people to know, too, who, if you want to break into tech, I think that's great. I think, though, that for people who want to break into tech, I think we all should expand our search to other industries outside of tech because every industry has a tech department. So if you can't get if you can't get into tech, like in a tech company, get into an industry like let's say let's say big retail or big health that still has a tech department. If you're in the tech department, you technically you're in med tech or you're in the I don't know if it's retail tech. I don't even think that's the thing. But let's let's go to property. If you're in the tech department of property, you're in prop tech. So the idea is look at other industries because they all have a tech department while in conjunction with you looking into exclusively the tech industry. Mm, I love that. So kind of going through that tunnel. And like you said, if you need to kind of take a detour or something, if you're going in tech, instead of being like, oh, I'm going to go here, go there, just bring everything into that prop mm -hmm. tech. Big because tech. Because the thing is, your tunnel is tech. You want to be in tech. That's your tunnel, right? When you get to the end, there's a plethora. Your plethora is... Look at other areas that still have a tech department. Mm, okay, okay, that's ooh, that's good, that's good. I got some, I got some folk who I'm coaching and some mentees that I'm like, I can't wait for them to see this because <laughs> you're answering all the questions that I'm kind of like. I mean, I'm bro, I'm not a recruiter. I don't know what to tell you about <laughs> that, but like this, this is this is excellent. This is excellent. So with with the time we got, I wanted to, I just wanted to know kind of with the with all that you have done and going through the challenges, not forgetting where you came from, going through college, pivoting and getting into higher ed, which side note, every person who I've interviewed all has a higher ed job background. I don't know mm -hmm. what it is about just higher ed in general, but it's like it just gets its teeth in everybody, I feel like. But that's that's just a whole side thing. With the with the bit of time that we have left, if you could leave a message, if if you had the attention of the entire world right now, what would be kind of that closing message you would want to give folk? My mom always tells me, "We don't fail, we fix it." So, and and I I heard something that I, in in conjunction with that, I heard Michelle Obama say, "You can't be afraid to fail." Right? So I put those two things together. You can't be afraid to fail, but you don't fail. You just fix it. Fix it. The only time I tell people, the only time you you fail is when you give up. You can't fix it if you if you've given it up. Like if I, I've decided that I'm just not going to do it anymore, at that point you fail. Mm -hmm. That's that is my definition of failure. I I am a I am someone who I will not take no for an answer. You're not going to, you would never be able to tell me I can't do something. I come from a people who we have, we have had to figure it out. Yeah. And so for me, it's no matter who you are, figure it out. And when mm. you figure it out, just know that it'll be worth it. And this is coming from someone who has had to figure it out after not passing the bar three different times of taking it after watching her entire study group, shout out to y'all because my study group came back to support me after watching her entire study group graduate before her, return to school before her. And literally when it was my time, they came back. So for me, it's, I've had to watch a lot of people and I've had to cheer people on from the sideline. But when it's your time, just know it'll be your time. Don't ever, don't ever be jealous or envious just because it's somebody else's time, because you never know what they had to get to, to get their triumph. But when it's yours, it's yours. And it's all about timing. Mm. When it's yours, it's yours. Don't be envious because it's all about timing. We don't fail as long as we fix it. Fix it. But if we stop fixing fix it, it, we failed. Ah, that is so good. Okay, okay. I want to hand everything. I want to hand the last bit over. Anything? Um, you have any projects coming up? Anything you want to let the people know that they can kind of follow, support, work with you, whatever. Yeah. So if you go on my LinkedIn, type in Sinead Urquhart, C-H-E-N-A-E. -E, last name is Urquhart, E-R-K-E-R-D. I am the only person with the first and last name spelled exactly like that. <laughs> my husband gave me a name that can't nobody say or spell. My mom gave me a name that can't nobody say or spell. So either way, 
I I am unique <laughs> in the best in the best way possible. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can go to at Recruiter Cousin, all one word. If you want to follow me on YouTube, it's Recruiter Cousin Consulting. If you want to follow me on TikTok, it is Recruiter Cousin. I am working on an I am doing a TED Talk on April 6th. I don't know when it's I don't know when the recording is going to be is going to be released or available to the public. I do know that I am doing a TED Talk. And I'm really excited because I've always wanted to do a TED Talk. And I hear that when you do a TED Talk, you've made it. That's the that's the Google, what Google says, you've made it. So I guess I've made it at this point. Not yet, so I'll do it. But I'm doing a TED Talk on April 6th. I'm really excited because I get to talk about my life experiences in a very concise way because I'm working on being concise. And I am going to a bunch of conferences this year. So I'm going to Afrotech in November of 2024. I will be at the Nesby conference. I'll actually be there for work. So Nesby is in Atlanta, uh, March 20th to the 24th. So I'll mm. be there. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, I also do a lot of posting of job boards and conferences and tips and tricks from a recruiter's perspective. I also introduce people to other recruiters in areas where I don't have my focus. So I try to introduce and bridge the gap between recruiters and job seekers so that people can understand the difference and try to make their job search a little easier. That is so good. That is so good. And, and thank you one for just serving and being not only just humble and approachable, but have but having something to offer. There's a lot of humble, approachable people that don't got nothing to say. It's like, I'll, <laughs> I'll help you. And it's like, I don't want you to help me. Uh, but I, I appreciate, one, you taking the time to talk with our community, taking the time to drop these gems and share your life story. And of course. For those, yeah. And for those who are listening, y'all, we will catch you next week. Stay inspired. Come back to the house. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. Have a good one.